I think society has a very short memory. Uh, I don't think they remember. I don't think uh, the younger generations realize how close and how severe uh, the consequences of the Cold War, the conflict that we went through, really was. The Cold War was a frightening time for the many people involved and must not be forgotten. The Cold War was fought from 1947 to around 1991. This battle pitted the Western Bloc made up of the United States of America, Canada, and several Western European nations such as England, France, and West Germany against the Eastern Bloc made up of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, or USSR for short, East Germany, and several Eastern European nations such as Czechoslovakia, Poland, and Bulgaria. Despite being titled a war, there was no instance of any large-scale physical fighting by the two major powers, the US and the USSR, only threats and propaganda. The USSR believed the adoption of communism around the world would be beneficial while the United States believed the communism should be stopped at all costs. There were many decisive events during the span of the Cold War, many of which left legacies that affect lives today. The purpose of this documentary is to take a look at some of these events, the decisions American leaders made, and the legacies left by the, these decisions in the areas of foreign relation, science, and national security. Tension between the United States and the USSR had never been higher than during the Cold War. At any moment, the two nations were prepared for an attack that would incite a nuclear war. This created unprecedented pressure to create a diplomatic resolution that would please the leaders of both nations. I say they were absolutely dire. Uh, it is, in my opinion, again, the only time in history that uh, uh, I could honestly say the fate of the world rested on one man's decision, and hopefully we'll never get there again. In early October 1962, an American U-2 surveillance plane took hundreds of photographs of Cuba. What these photographs depicted sent the White House into an intense situation full of decisions that could begin carving a path towards peace or mark the beginning of a nuclear war. All of these decisions were made in just 13 days. On October 16, 1962, President John F. Kennedy and a group of foreign policy and national defense officials were shown and educated on the pictures taken by the U-2. The pictures depicted nuclear weapon sites being built by the USSR and Cuba. The initial fear was the proximity of Cuba to Florida. At this time, President Kennedy was told he had to make a decision between two options. Call in an airstrike and invade Cuba, or set up a ring of ships around Cuba to quarantine the country, thus stopping the flow of materials needed to build nuclear weapon sites. On October 20th, President Kennedy and his advisors decided on the quarantine. Kennedy called past presidents Hoover, Truman, and Eisenhower to form a team of leaders capable of creating a plan to execute the quarantine. Kennedy officially deemed this team of four the Executive Committee of National Security Council, or XCOM for short. On October 23rd, Kennedy signed Proclamation 3504. This authorized the quarantine of Cuba. Kennedy asked Russian leader Nikita Khrushchev to stop all Russian ships from advancing towards Cuba and to remove the nuclear weapon sites from the country. Khrushchev saw Kennedy's proposition as an ultimatum and a threat. Despite his reaction, Khrushchev halted the movement of all Russian ships with the exception of the tanker Bucharest, which was eventually allowed to pass after an inspection for military parts. Just three days into the quarantine, leader of Cuba Fidel Castro pleaded with Khrushchev to launch a nuclear missile against the United States if the U.S. initiated an invasion of Cuba. Later that same day, Khrushchev sent a letter to Kennedy with this offer. Remove the quarantine of Cuba and pledge not to invade the country in exchange for the removal of Russian nuclear missile sites in Cuba. The next day, Khrushchev sent Kennedy another letter stating that in addition to his previous offer, he also wanted Kennedy to remove the, by this time, outdated Jupiter missiles located in Turkey. On October 28th, the terms of this offer went into effect. The USSR began removing its nuclear missile sites, and the US removed the quarantine and its Jupiter missiles in Turkey. The Cuban Missile Crisis is a good example of American leadership. President Kennedy took advantage of everything he could. He did not make a decision without first consulting advisors and even past leaders of the United States. He made a well-informed decision that involved peace rather than violence. If he had ordered an invasion of Cuba, a nuclear war would have most likely occurred.
President John F. Kennedy effectively kept the peace under an immense amount of pressure in a time full of tension and risk. During the Cold War, millions of people were constantly on high alert from the threat of a possible Third World War. Due to the high tension, the United States had to heighten national security. There was one leader who made several very important additions to the national security of the United States after signing a document known as the National Security Act of 1947. This man was President Harry S. Truman. The significance of the National Security Act of 1947 can be divided into three points. The unification of the Army, Air Force, and Navy branches of military. The creation of the National Security Council, which was crucial to forming new national security policies. And the creation of the Central Intelligence Agency, or CIA. The main purpose of the National Security Council, or NSC, was and is still to form and give advice to the president on matters concerning national security and foreign affairs. The president also uses the NSC to coordinate foreign policies with other government agencies. The NSC is crucial in presidential decision making because the NSC can share its information with the president and guide him towards the best course of action. Along with the creation of the National Security Council, the Central Intelligence Agency abbreviated CIA was also created. When President Truman began his time in office at the end of World War II, he and a vast majority of other United States leaders agreed a restructuring of the intelligence establishment of the Office of Strategic Services, OSS for short, was in order. The OSS was an intelligence agency created during World War II with the purpose of gathering intelligence from enemies of the United States and sabotaging their plans. At the end of World War II, the OSS was disbanded due to the United States' desire to return to normalcy. After the signing of the National Security Act in 1947, Truman and Coordinator of Information William J. Donovan created the Central Intelligence Agency. The CIA was responsible for the same task during the Cold War as the OSS had been during World War II. The CIA would also carry out orders given by the NSC if they related to intelligence. The space race was a competition between the United States and the USSR from 1957 to 1972. The goal for both nations was to land humans on the moon. This competition would increase the rate of advancement in science and technology to a rate never before reached. That has been fantastic for the, for the terminology. Uh, in a nutshell, there's, there's nothing like a good war or the threat of a war to uh, get the scientists working on all kinds of different technologies. The Soviets became the first nation to launch a satellite into space on October 4, 1957. They called this satellite Sputnik 1. Despite losing the race to launch the first Earth-orbiting satellite, the United States were not far behind. The U.S. launched Explorer 1 on January 31, 1958. The Soviets would also defeat the Americans in sending the first living creature into space, launching the first man into space, and completing the first spacewalk. Despite being vested in these portions of the race, the United States kept their sights on the goal, landing the first man on the moon. After several more years of research and testing, the U.S. finally accomplished the goal. On July 20, 1969, two American astronauts, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin, took the first ever human steps on the moon, thus solidifying the United States' victory into space and beyond. The space race could arguably be considered the time where the United States and the USSR were the farthest from war. The two nations were focused on winning the space race. They pushed each other and today the world has benefited from this competition. Without this competition we may have just been barely landing on the moon today. Instead, we know as much as we do about space because of the discoveries made during the space race. These discoveries include the Van Allen radiation belts and satellite navigation. The world is as advanced as it currently is because of the space race. The Cold War was a time full of fear, paranoia, competition, and tension. Every decision made was important. One wrong move and millions upon millions of people would have died. American leaders showed great leadership and did everything in their power to move towards diplomacy. They wanted to keep their people safe. They fought to always be one step ahead of the USSR. When the Berlin Wall fell in 1989, the beginning of the end of the Cold War may have begun and tension may have died down but that tension lives on today between Russia and the United States. The world is returning to the brink of war, and if the time comes, may the events of the Cold War not be forgotten. May we instead use them as an example.